Hi, I'm Blake and I'm with Boulevard Home Service and Repair, your friendly appliance repair technician. Today we're going to talk about refrigerators, we'll talk about the ins and outs of them. We're going to cover the three different types of refrigeration systems. We're also going to cover the humidity control systems and also the advanced air control system and that can be called a bunch of different names and we'll cover some of those names that people call those and how they will affect the freshness of your food and how well that it works for your needs. We're gonna talk about the different types of refrigeration systems that are currently in the refrigerators. They're kind of confusing unless you really understand the ins and outs of them and there's a lot of terminology thrown around. So we're gonna break it down to some, to some easy things. So we've got a couple different types of compressors and evaporators and We have a single compressor, single evaporator. A compressor is just a fancy name for a pump. All it does is pump refrigerant. We also have a single compressor, dual evaporator, and then we also have a dual compressor, dual evaporator. With evaporator, all it does is make the unit it get cold. Now all these do the same type of job, but they all work differently. First of all, we're going to cover the single evaporator, single compressor unit. Now with this unit, this is units that have been around forever since probably the 60s or even earlier than that. With this type of unit, you have one evaporator and that evaporator is in the freezer section here on this bottom freezer. The compressor runs and it moves the cold air from the freezer section into the refrigerator section to get it cold. So the only thing that actually gets cold is the freezer and the air the refrigerator gets is only from the freezer. So they share air, air is then transferred between both compartments. They're usually your least expensive refrigerator. Uh, there's less working parts into it. It's not extremely efficient strictly because if one section needs cold air and the other one does not, the evaporator still has to run to get the unit cold to push cold air up to the refrigerator section if needed, or just the freezer if needed, or if both section needs it. So it does work, but it's the, probably the least efficient as far as the refrigerator runtime. The second thing is we have a single compressor dual evaporator. Both sections have an evaporator. With this type of system, you have a single compressor in the back, you have a valve at the back that will direct the refrigerant to either the freezer section or the refrigerator section in the unit or both sections if both sections are calling for it. Because there's more parts involved in the system is gonna increase your cost to it, but it's also gonna increase your efficiency also. So you have to kind of figure that in because it's definitely more efficient. The only drawback being is you have more components that could possibly fail down the road, but it's also a good option to look at. Third, we've got a dual evaporator, dual compressor system. And there's only a few of them on the market. The only one that I know of is the Bosch series currently, but I'm sure it'll be coming down the market. But in a freestanding refrigerator such as this, most of them are single compressor, but there is a model in the Bosch line that carries a dual evaporator, dual compressor system. And what that means for you is each section is basically its own refrigeration system. Where with the other systems, if the compressor fails, that will affect both systems, both your refrigerator and your freezer. Same with the single evaporators and the dual evaporators. It's almost a safer system because it will actually keep a section running if something does fail within the refrigeration system. That is gonna be your most expensive at this point uh, until a lot more manufacturers start building them and start putting them out. They've been in use in built-in refrigerators for a very long time, ones that are built into your cabinetry. But as far as freestanding, it's still fairly new. It is the most expensive, but is it the least expensive? Running two compressors, I can't really say for sure, but I would say it's pretty comparable to a single compressor dual evaporator system as far as cost to run. All right, so you're probably wondering at this point, well, how does this affect the freshness of my food? And we, now we've talked about all the different types of systems. Well, it does affect the freshness when it comes to uh, odor transfer and a bunch of other things that can happen. Now with a single compressor, single evaporator system that has the air comes from the freezer and it feeds that cold air into the refrigerator section to make it cold and then it goes back into the freezer to get cold again and it comes back around. With that type of system, you will get odor transfer from the refrigerator section into the freezer section. If you put things in the refrigerator that are smelly, such as cut onions, um, anything that has a strong odor to it, with this type of system, if it's not covered or sealed, or anything, that odor then will be transferred from the refrigerator section into the freezer section uh, because that's the way the cooling process works. Your ice itself will start tasting like onions or start tasting like sauerkraut. And that's the reason why that is, is because it's actually being transferred from one section into the other section. Now, with the other types of systems, with the dual evaporator systems, either single compressor or dual compressor, those are basically 
separate compartments for the air to flow. The air does not transfer between one section to the next section. So your food does keep fresher. It does not transfer odors between the section and you have less moisture between the sections because when you're opening and closing the refrigerator section on a single evaporator system, the moisture that goes in there from just opening and closing and from drinks and things like that, that moisture is also transferred into the freezer section and then also back up. So you're getting moisture transfer also. Well, with the other systems, you don't have that moisture transfer between the two sections. So again, keeps your food longer, keeps it uh, from getting squishy or, or anything of that variety. And it does keep your food fresher longer. All right, so now we're gonna talk about humidity control systems. People have had refrigerators, they don't quite understand their humidity control systems. They're fantastic systems, they work well. You just have to understand what they do. And so we're, we're gonna explain that a little bit. Now with a humidity control system, you have climate control systems here. They say climate control and they always say fruits and vegetables or they say high and low. And you're like, where do I set this to keep my food fresh? I don't understand how this works. Or they just throw it on something and they just throw their vegetables and then call it good. Well, we need to talk about humidity and how you vegetables uh, you know react to it so anything with a skin so your apples your oranges your pears anything with a skin we don't want to add more humidity to those items because then they become you bite to the apple instead of having a nice crisp apple you have a soft squishy applesauce apple and that's not very good and most people don't like that some people do so I shouldn't be knocking it but Myself, I like a nice crisp apple. So if you give your refrigerator and put it in a section and you have it on a high humidity section, well, what that does is adds lots of moisture into that fruit. And so by the time you eat it, it's, it's squishy. We don't want that. So with that type of section, you put those items on a low humidity section. And that way we keep the moisture low in it and that way it will stay nice and crisp. Now, anything that's leafy, such as celery, lettuce, cabbage, anything that's leafy, we wanna have high humidity because we wanna keep the moisture in there so it stays nice and firm and, and we have a nice lettuce because you don't want wilted lettuce. So with those type of systems, you wanna make sure that you have high humidity in those systems. So you can always adjust it based on the drawer. Sometimes you have combination things in the drawer. We wanna make sure that you adjust it appropriately for what you have in there. So if you have a little bit of both, you can adjust your sliders for what is mostly in there. That way it will keep your vegetables longer and keep your fruits lasting longer. Not all systems have where you have an adjustment on this, like where you can adjust your humidity controls, like on this GE unit. Uh, we have a GE unit that's right next door here and we're gonna show that one, where the drawers are labeled vented or non-vented. If it's non-vented, it is low humidity section. If it's vented, it's high humidity section. So if it says that, that's what the difference is. It's the difference between your high humidity vegetables that are leafy and your low humidity uh, vegetables that, that have skins to it. And that's the difference between uh, these types of systems. There's also a confusion always where you have one of the sections is listed as a deli drawer. Now the deli drawers are listed as a meat or a deli drawer or a cold section drawer like this one has right here at the very bottom of this refrigerator. Now people confuse this sometimes with being a vegetable drawer for humidity. Well, it's not. This, these types of sections are designed to keep that area colder than the rest of the refrigerator section. So you can keep meats longer, you can keep cheeses longer because it's colder than what the rest of the refrigerator section is without making the rest of the section up in here get so cold that it's affecting the freshness of your other fruits and vegetables and your other food that's up here in the upper section. So always be mindful of what type of section you're putting it in. Uh, that will also keep your freshness of your food and keep it lasting the longest that we possibly can. All right, so now moving on to the multi-flow air system or the advanced flow air system with refrigerators. Now, they basically mean the same thing. Different manufacturers call them different things. Well, the biggest difference between the multi-flow and the non-multi-flow air is on the side-by-side -side that's next to me right here. Now, this is a single flow system, which means all the air in the refrigerator compartment comes in on the very top of the unit, very top left corner uh, as you look at it. So with that, when the airflow comes in, it is all dependent on how well it cools everything in that refrigerator, where it bounces down, goes all the way down to the bottom, pulled back into the freezer section and then pumped back up top. You will have potential 
spots in there that aren't as cold as the rest of them because it's all dictated on how the air is being bounced around within the compartment itself. But with this type of system, you have multiple ports that the air comes into the refrigerator section between the shelves. When it does that, you have more even control as far as temperature of your food within that section. You don't have warm spots or really cold spots it stays pretty even all the way across from top to bottom. The thing with this type is, if you put vegetables or anything that's sensitive to temperature right back over those vent holes where they come through into the refrigerator section, it can make those a little bit too cold. You wanna take and move those more toward the front of the refrigerator or move them off to the side where the vent holes aren't blowing air directly on those. That's really about the only differences between the types of airflow systems and how they work. Even if this one is a single compressor, single evaporator, bottom freezer, and the air does still flow from the refrigerator section into the freezer and back up, but because of the type of system that it uses as far as the multi-air, you will get air across all the shelves where on this side-by-side -side right here where it just has the single air coming in, it will affect the freshness of your food because you will have warm spots and cold spots based on how the air is flowing through that section. You might be thinking you might be paying a lot more money up front for this feature. Uh, not really, it's just depending on how the manufacturer built the unit. If they can build a multi-airflow, they usually do because it is more effective as far as keeping your food cold. They wanna make sure that you, the consumer, are happy with the refrigerator and how well it cools. A lot of the new refrigerators have air filters in them. Now these air filters that are put in there, they are charcoal filters that just basically absorb the odors so they're not transferring from one section to the other section or within a section itself. So with those air filters, they are effective because they are charcoal, they need to replace about once every six months for them to work effectively. After six months, the charcoal really doesn't absorb a whole lot. If you don't want to use the filters in it, you know, the manufacturers have them there for the ability for you to use. But if you don't, as long as you keep your foods covered and sealed, you won't have any odor transfers uh, around within the unit. And again, that will help with the freshness of your food and also the taste of your food. Well, thank you for watching this video. We do appreciate your time. And I hope this video was helpful when it comes to your decision for your next refrigerator, what to buy, what to look for when you're buying, and what all these different terminology means when you're looking at it and talking to your salesperson for your next purchase. Hey everybody, hope you enjoyed the video. Check out our other amazing videos here on the Boulevard Home YouTube site. We have so many things, best dishwashers, best built-in refrigerators. Check out our channel for amazing great things and you can see many of these videos right here around me. We 